I'm David Ewens, and I'll be speaking on the topic of regularity of GP contacts and adherence to statin therapy. I'd like to thank my co-authors and all sponsors and anyone taking the time to watch. This is in the area of continuity of care, which can be defined as an ongoing relationship between patient and doctor, transcending illness episodes, including responsibility for preventive care and coordination. There are many definitions, but typically this is measured by assessing whether a patient is consistently seeing the same GP or switching between GPs. Our research group has additionally measured the regularity of GP contacts. That is, a patient can see the GP on a regular basis, which probably reflects planned proactive care, or they might have irregular contacts, i.e. extended periods without seeing the GP, followed by a flurry of activity in response to some problem. There has been a fair amount of literature published demonstrating associations that continuity and regularity have with reductions in hospitalizations and ED presentations. People writing this research usually suggest that any effects on hospitalization outcomes occur via intermediate outcomes like improved monitoring of the patient or the relationship with the GP promoting patient adherence with advice. These outcomes don't typically get assessed though. So of course there's a risk that the associations observed with hospitalization results result from unobserved confounding. So why not directly assess this? Statins are a useful area to look at for this purpose. This is because they are known to influence hospital use. Often people taking statins are non-adherent and often people with high cardiovascular disease risk presenting to general practice are not prescribed with statins. One previous paper has found that continuity of care is associated with improved statin adherence. There are still evidence gaps concerning associations with initiation of therapy among people at risk of CVD. And there's no evidence relating to regularity, which should be useful to understand in addition to continuity. So the objective here is to understand the impacts of regularity and continuity of GP contact on statin initiation and adherence among patients with and at high risk of CVD. How did we address this? We use data from the Sachs Institute's 45 and up study, which is a study of over 267,000 participants aged 45 and above in New South Wales, recruited over a four year period. There was a baseline questionnaire, which included a range of information covering demographics, health and lifestyle behaviors, health status, and so on. And this was linked to hospital separations, the Medicare benefits schedule, which captures GP attendances, the pharmaceutical benefits scheme and death records. Our study cohort is made up of participants with a history of CVD based on hospitalization data and Medicare claims for certain out of hospital procedures. The cohort also includes people at high risk of CVD based on age, sex, smoking, hypertension status, and some other risk factors. High risk here means a 15% chance of a CVD event within five years based on Australian guidelines for the management of absolute CVD risk. The distinction between these groups doesn't really come into the presentation due to time. There is a breakdown into potential and existing statin users. If people use statins through the exposure period, they are existing users. And if they didn't, then they're potential users. These two groups are discussed separately because they require different analyses. We look at people aged 55 to 75, and there's an additional exclusion of people with fewer than three GP contacts because we can't calculate the regularity and continuity measures. Regularity is calculated based on the dates of GP visits. For each visit during the exposure period, we count the number of days since the prior visit. Then we calculate the coefficient of variation in this number of days and use a simple formula to convert that to a score between zero and one. Continuity is calculated using the continuity of care index which looks at the distribution of a person's GP visits to different providers. Basically, if someone consistently sees the same GP, they'll have a high score. If they keep seeing different GPs, they'll have a low score. Both of these indices range from zero to one and are categorized for analysis. Regularity is converted into quintiles, whereas continuity is split into four roughly equal groups. A longitudinal design was used to minimize the risk of reverse causation. The regularity and continuity measures are assessed through a one year exposure period. Prior to this, there's a pre exposure period where the cohort capture occurs. Baseline characteristics are captured and people are defined as either existing or potential users, depending on their statin use. 
then of course there is a follow-up period after the exposure period where the outcomes are assessed. The pharmaceutical data set that we rely on for the statin use outcomes captures medications being dispensed to patients from community pharmacies. We don't directly observe prescribing by the GP, so unfilled prescriptions are invisible to us. For the group of potential statin users, we look at statin initiation during a one-year follow-up period. We consider someone to have initiated statins if we see any dispensation occurring. In terms of non-adherence among existing users, through a three-year period, we class someone as non-adherent if there's a gap of 30 consecutive days where the person does not have statins available, assuming that people take one tablet per day following a dispensation. Packs in Australia include 30 days supply, so this means one packet is missed entirely. It is possible for people to collect a supply before the previous one is scheduled to end, in which case overlapping days are carried forward. And if someone spends time in hospital, they're assumed to have been supplied through the hospital pharmacy at this time. We use logistic regression when assessing the outcome of statin initiation and Cox regression when assessing statin non-adherence. In both cases, we select covariates using a forward stepwise selection. What did we find? The cohort included about 60,000 people. Two thirds of these were male, Three quarters had good or very good self-reported health. Those are levels three and four on a five point scale. And a slight majority were past smokers as opposed to current or never smokers. About 40% had a history of CVD and the remainder had high CVD risk. The cohort was evenly split between potential and existing statin users. The existing users were older or more likely to be female and had poorer self-reported health than potential users. About a quarter of potential users did initiate statins during follow-up, while among existing users, over half reported non-adherence during follow-up, 3% were censored by death and the remainder were adherent through the three-year follow-up period. On to the model results. I'm only reporting results in relation to regularity and continuity, although there were other covariates from the stepwise selection, including the count of GP contacts during the exposure period and measures of comorbidity, but these aren't the main interest today. This figure essentially displays odds ratios, representing the odds of statin initiation for each level of regularity and continuity, the reference category being the least regular or lowest continuity group. Higher regularity was associated with a higher likelihood of, sta of initiating statins, with the most regular group having an odds ratio about 1.2. Higher continuity was also associated with an increased likelihood of initiation. This trend reversed to an extent in the perfect continuity group, those being people who had all of their visits to the same GP. Though there is a bit of a phenomenon where perfect continuity may be more likely to be achieved where someone has relatively few GP visits. Now looking at the Cox regression assessing statin non-adherence among existing users, here the outcome is framed in the negative, so we're looking at hazard ratios for non-adherence. Higher regularity was associated with a reduced likelihood of statin non-adherence with a hazard ratio of about 0.84. And something similar was seen for continuity. There were some violations of the proportional hazards assumption, which was dealt with by using the problematic variables as stratifying variables rather than covariates. In summary, these results suggest some plausible pathways through which regularity and continuity may influence downstream outcomes. These patterns of GP contact may have roles in both influencing initiation of new therapy and adherence to existing therapy. The major limitation here is of course that this is observational and we can't make assumptions about causation. And here we treat non-adherence as a negative outcome, though in many cases a medication will be stopped due to side effects, which is valid. If a GP deals with side effects by switching statin type, the patient would remain adherent in these analyses. And although we might incorrectly class some people as non-adherent, the longitudinal design should stop this um, from causing any reverse causation issues. The most obvious follow-up work from this is to additionally incorporate hospitalization outcomes in the analysis and assess the role of statin initiation or adherence as a mediator in that pathway. And there's also further work to look at impacts on health status as indicated by results and pathology tests, which might provide a more objective measure of patient health. That's all from me.
Thanks again for watching and feel free to send any questions you may have to my email address. Thank you.